All right, this will either be how to make an awesome sword prop or how to screw something up royally. What's up YouTube, Griever here, and in this video, I'm going to be working on a prop that's been kind of sitting in the shop for a while that I decided, you know what, I want to try and get it done. And that is actually going to be this. Uh, this is a Pirates of the Caribbean. I think it was specifically listed as a Jack Sparrow, but it could just have been listed as a Pirates of the Caribbean Pirate Cutlass. But nonetheless, this was a uh, Halloween prop that I got when Party City in my area decided to go out of business. And this was on the cheap, and I'm like, you know what? I'll pick it up. I'll see what I can do with it. And it's been sitting around and I'm like, uh, what should I do? What should I do? And then I remembered that my flintlock, I did that one up a while back. It came out really nice. I can kind of try and make it a companion if I want to do so. For those who have never seen it, this is actually the flintlock in question. Uh, this was a Busby flintlock that I had worked on. Uh, the, prim the primer actually broke and this wasn't actually functioning anymore so i just decided to gut it glued everything in place so everything is all nice and not moving so it's a nice static prop and what i did was is i obviously painted over everything um i did the barrel with a hammered i, I believe it was a hammered aluminum on there the plate here and also the trigger guard the rest of it, the gold is actually hand-painted Testor's uh, gold, which I wanted to do because I wanted to do kind of the recesses in there, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that with the spray paints. So I figured, eh, I'll just go with it, see how well it turns out. And I got to say, it turned out really good. And then the body of it, I wanted to do something a little different. And since I did everything with the charcoal gray vinyl dye that I normally would use, which kind of sucks for this project because I'm out, and still under quarantine not me personally i'm talking about like the state of new jersey itself but i went over it with a nice uh like brown and black uh dry brush and it came out with a honestly a really nice subtle wood grain underneath it so it almost looks like it is a gray wood but what i want to do for the cutlass is i want to try and mirror that a little bit but not a one-to-one -one because again i don't have my gray vinyl dye i am going to be using some flat black to go over everything and make a base for it i'm gonna do the d guard the collar of the scabbard along with the tip of the scabbard in this uh was champagne bronze from rustoleum and to just kind of go over the blade which i gotta say doesn't look terrible but i want to sand it down just to make it a, maybe a little bit more uniform so to speak and just also give it a little bit of a more of a luster and for that i'm going to be using this rust-oleum silver metallic now i do have a chrome that i have used before I may wind up switching to that. I'm not 100% sure of it because I don't want the luster of the blade to like kind of look out of place, so to speak. So I may wind up doing that and then dusting it with the chrome just to maybe give it a little bit more of a polish. But I don't want just straight chrome because I don't want it to look like a freshly polished sword. Uh, this is supposed to be a prop and I want it to... You know, I want it to look like it's been, you know, used and weathered a little bit without overly weathering it. Now, what I'm going to do for the scabbard and the handle itself is I do have this flat brown uh, Rust-Oleum that I've used before. And the last time I actually used this was on the last word that I made, George, and also the Kira Blaster. Uh from the Han Solo movie and it makes a really nice base for if you're going to fake wood 
Um, stop with the jokes. This is clean. As clean as I'm trying to make it, damn it. Um, but I figured that would be a nice base to go over, and then I can do either, you know, a black dry brushing over it to kind of give it more of a wood grain texture. Uh, same thing for, and honestly, for the handle, I'm not 100% set on what I want to do with it yet because. My original idea was I wanted to do kind of like a uh, leather wrapped handle, but it's really small and I've never actually done that before. So I got to see if I can, you know, fake it till I make it, so to speak. Uh, the only other thing I really want to do is just because it looks so bad in the D guard is, um, and also depending on what I do with the handle itself is I want to fill in those screw holes because honestly, I don't know why they made those because this is actually solvent welded together. I've taken out the screws before and I've not been able to actually split this thing. So it makes no sense to leave the screw holes there if there's no reason for me to open it. Um, I did leave the screw holes in here because hindsight being 2020, A, I never thought to fill it in. So, and also B, if for any reason somebody pulls on the trigger or the hammer and it actually breaks, I can open it up and reglue it. Um, but that's it for at least this opening section so i'm gonna go over to the workbench start on the sanding of it now i think for the most part this is actually going to work and if you saw the opening you'd understand why i'm staining this but i'm not 100 percent sure how well this is going to work because the scabbard and the blade itself I'm not 100% sure what plastic this is, so I don't know how well it's actually going to sand. So, this is possibly going to turn out either really cool, or you're going to see me at the end of the video just go, well, I gave it a shot. So, let's see where this goes now. So, come, take this adventure with me. Okay, so we're at the workbench, and I got basically all I'm going to need. I have... What's left of my 220 sandpaper, uh, some 400, my, is this my two, I think this might be my 220 sponge. This I'm going to be kind of using for the scabbard and the blade itself. Worst case scenario is I'm going to try the scouring pet, uh, the scouring pet again. So hopefully that will be enough to just rough up the surface without like completely destroying it. And just to kind of go over what I was mentioning before in regards to possibly doing a leather wrap, these are just samples that I had. Um, this one you would recognize from when uh, me and Arlene, mostly Arlene, uh, made the, uh, the tool wrap for the Thieves tools that my friend Sam made, which is also kind of part of the whole set. And it's a nice heavy leather and or fake leather but it's also on the thick side so i don't know how well it's going to work with the size of that handle because i mean honest honest to god it's literally just perfect sized like as is so adding any bolt to it could throw that off which is why i also have this uh much thinner pleather which would work i just have to figure out how to actually cut and wrap it so that may be later, or it may not be, but those are the options that I have for those. So in the meantime, let's get started on this. Now, I know this is more likely than not ABS, and so is this, and so is that. How that hurt my finger. Uh, what I want to do for the most part is I want to try and get everything as smooth as I possibly can. Now, on the scabbard itself, there's a bit of a lip here, and you can even hear that, which... I do not like and I want to get rid of. Uh, you can also kind of see the lines of where the plastics meet for the collar. And you can actually see the seams all the way through on both sides. So uh, the other thing that like really kind of irks me is just that weird little plastic knot there. I'm definitely going to try and get that sanded as smooth as possible I can. Uh, the sword itself really isn't terribly bad. Um, there's a little bit of a ridge here where they molded whatever this, whatever they made the blade out of. So, I mean, that should be easy enough to take off so long as it doesn't break. And the D guard and the handle are going to be no problem whatsoever. I mean, this is plastic I've sanded hundreds of times. So, 
as long as nothing falls apart, I think we should be okay with all of this. So I'm going to get to work sanding on it, and I'll see you guys in a minute to show you either a glorious success or an epic failure. Please be a success. Okay, so I have to say, so far the scabbard's sanding up actually really nicely. Um, I did have to actually break out my dremel with a sanding drum on it just because one with the size of sandpaper and like the diameter of this for some reason i was having real trouble just getting a nice handle on it um but yeah you can see where that ugly plastic weld knot thing was uh that's pretty much gone and once i get primer on it and get some uh paint on it it's totally going to be gone um, I have knocked down the seam along the spine um, a bit pretty well. And it looks like it's actually holding nice. And same thing with here. I'm um, going to try and get the seam a little bit more down uh, than it is. And I'm honestly using the Dremel for it. And it's making quick work of it. So I'm going to get back to this. And I'll show you once everything is all sanded. Unless I run into an issue with the blade. Then you'll see that. Okay, so just a quick little update on where everything is. The scabbard and the cutlass all have their black vinyl dye base coats on them. The cutlass actually is getting the blade painted right now. I have a layer of the Ace Chrome Silver, which actually I think is out. Oh no, it's right here. Uh, the Chrome Aluminum, sorry. Uh, I wound up actually going with this because when I put a layer of this stuff down, it looked more just like glitter spray paint, and it wasn't really coming out very good. It was going to take way, way, way more coats of this stuff than I want. So I went with the chrome aluminum. It's got a gloss, so it will have a little bit of sheen to it, which I'm fine with. I was thinking about dusting it with this anyway so the blade is just going to be that now and i'm totally fine with that uh regarding the scabbard now i did run into a small hiccup which caused me to change my game plan a little bit because the vinyl die isn't adhering to whatever plastic this thing is made out of very well because i've done a couple of test pieces after even letting it sit for overnight so i mean it had a good cure time on it but I was still able to peel off a little bit of paint and you can actually see like right there, you see how it's like two different color blacks. That's because that's where some of the paint actually came off of. I did test the collar and the tip of the scabbard. Those took fine. I can put painter's tape on it. It's not going to be a problem. What I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to tape off those ends, paint this the brown, and then go in with this Testor's enamel paint marker, which actually what I used to do a little bit of the detailing on the uh, flintlock and also kind of matches pretty close to this here anyway. So that's going to be hand done technically while I do the rest of this with the spray paint. Uh, so that's it. I'll probably show you everything once it's all done and painted. So unless something else comes up. So see you in a Okay, minute. so... This is finally done, and I have to say this, thank God. Okay, full disclosure. Painting this thing was actually a bigger pain in the ass than I thought it was going to be. So, let me break it down to you. One, the vinyl dye actually did not adhere to this plastic, or the blade properly. Don't know why. Again, I'm not 100% sure what plastics either one are. But yes, when I put some tape on it so that I could, you know, properly paint other pieces. And I peeled the tape off. Even after checking it, it still pulled off chunks. This was also after letting it sit well overnight. So you're talking at least letting it cure for like 12 plus hours. Um, in one case, I think it may have actually been 24 or more. So there's that. 
I do have to say I am very happy with how the uh, sheath came out. Uh, despite the, again, the pain in the butt that it was, it did come out extremely nice. The gold took to the cap and the tip very well, or the champagne bronze. The I did get a little frustrated with the dry brushing to make the faux wood, because when I originally did it, it just came out as globby black spots, and it looked like crap. Uh, however, while venting to one of my friends about this, uh, she had suggested, why don't you just try using some paint thinner? I didn't really think of that because I didn't want it to strip off the brown spray paint, but thankfully the thinner did not. And as I wiped, it left just the right amount of black in certain spots. So I have kind of a very nice wood grain texture on it. So I am very happy with that. The blade, on the other hand, this was a pain in the ass. Few reasons. One, again, vinyl dye did not take to the blade, so when I had this taped off to paint the rest of this, it peeled, which was a pain. But I went back and I resprayed it, and it was fine. Um, I did want to make this little spot um, here actually the wood color. However, when I went to go peel the tape off of it, it peeled off all the brown tape. So I just took my gold testers paint marker and just colored it in, which is why that ring looks off to everything else. But it's fine. I digress. The one thing I have to say I am extremely happy with is how the handle came out. Uh, the wood, my little faux wood grain texture on here actually does look very, very nice. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. But I have to say I kind of impressed myself with that, which was really, really neat. Now comes to the parts that really annoyed me with this. I wound up actually doing the chrome on the blade because A... The original metallic spray paint I was going to use on it was coming out for some reason just as glitter. So I did like one or two passes on it and it looks like I just sprayed like glitter on black over black and it looked like garbage. So I said, screw it. I'll go with the chrome. Went with the chrome, did the spray of it and it came out really, really nice. Very nice. Very vibrant. I let it dry taped it off did the rest of it uh sprayed the handle the brown first then i because it was easier to tape off the handle once that was painted than it was to tape off all of this stuff and after that i then put the clear coat on it not thinking the clear coat completely dulled the finish of the chrome and it basically looked like the silver that I started with. And I was like, holy shit, fuck almighty. So I wound up repainting the blade with the chrome and I was fine. However, the chrome, for some reason, kept rubbing off on my hand. And I was very upset over that. So I wound up having to wipe down the blade several times. So instead of a nice like lustrous chrome on here i now just have a dull metal finish which in all honesty was what i was kind of going for but once i actually saw the chrome on here i was really excited about that and then when it came down to this i'm like damn it um the other thing is the handle uh for some reason it kind of got cloudy with the uh clear coat i'm not 100 percent sure why because if you compare the handle and here, you can tell the handle definitely looks a little duller in certain lights. Um, so it does kind of take away from the wood grain that I put on here. So I'm upset about that. But it also does kind of give it like a worn, you know, this is a well-used sword type of thing. So I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, that's it for this prop build. 
So now I have a sword to go with my flintlock. So if I ever decide to do a pirate cosplay, hey, I'm all set. Or if Arlene decides to do it, whichever one of us does it first. Well, that's going to be it for this video. And again, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this thing because honestly, I got mixed feelings on it. I don't know if I'd want to do this again. Or if I do, I definitely want to try a different type of sword or different brand, so to speak. But it is what it is. Um, oh, and don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel here. But again, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later. Thank <laughs> you.